Attention, listener. I have an assignment for you. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to engage with the real nerds, a.k.a. the best podcast on the internet. You can listen to their episodes on their website, realnerdspodcast.com. And you can also listen to them on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, and iTunes. Follow their social media pages on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. This message will self-destruct never. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Ming Chen from AMC's Comic Book Men. Listen, I have my own podcast. I have my own podcast studio. I don't really care about those. What I really care about is the Real Nerds podcast, the best podcast in the universe, in the multiverse, in in on all Earth, 616 and beyond. Listen to it. Subscribe right now and uh, listen to this episode. Listen to all the episodes, but especially listen to, the, listen to the one that I'm on. It might be the best. Thank you, guys. Camera, action! Well, a real nerd knows who shot, and a real nerd can follow the plot, and a real nerd can... Doesn't talk to the film! I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Take it outside. Well, a real nerd knows who shot, and a real nerd can follow the plot, and a real nerd... This is Real Nerds Podcast, and for over 10 years, we have seen a new movie and podcast our experience to the world. This week, we saw Death on the Nile. It's murder! (laughs) Stay tuned soon, and we'll tell you if we recommend the film or not, play the trailer, and then spoil it. Uh, We also talk about the big movie news of the week and Hollywood's big comeback. We'll check on those box office numbers and brad i have to say i'm disappointed on something oh no what i do no not you it's me oh, cool so yeah yeah so i was at the grocery store before we got on smart and um i'm sitting in the checkout line and i look over and i see a candy bar that i'm guessing is going to taste like garbage but i have like my fingers crossed you know could this be good who knows there's a there's a 50 50 chance here even though i'm guessing it's not going to be the candy bar is a Fruity Pebbles candy bar. Now, I love Fruity Pebbles as cereal. So I'm like, hmm, Fruity Pebbles candy bar? Really can't go wrong, right? Uh, in theory. Yeah, but it's like white chocolate. I'm not the biggest fan of white chocolate. And I get why they did white chocolate. I'm guessing to create. It's like the cereal, but in candy bar mode. But the uh, the white chocolate is not as creamy as I wanted it to be. So I, I'm a little disappointed in it. I mean, I can still taste the Fruity Pebbles, and that's cool. But, you know, I just, I, I guess I wanted more. Isn't that just like a regular cereal bar, though? Well, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, I guess, but it's not because it just has, like, um, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I but they it had, like, has... cereal and then, like, a layer of, you know, milk and then, like, the Fruity <laughs> Pebbles, like, <laughs> dry milk and then uh, like a layer of peps on top of that right like that's a regular cereal bar and they have yeah this one is like straight up candy bars i mean it's white chocolate with uh fruity pebbles mixed in kind of like uh uh like a crunch bar with rice krispies huh and that's i mean that would have been good i think chocolate and fruity pebbles would mix right i don't know i don't know try some chocolate milk and some regular pebbles see how that goes see i like where your head's at but yeah that's so that's why i'm disappointed i really yeah. wanted to really enjoy my fruity pebbles i wanted it to be yabba dabba delicious and it was yabba dabba disappointing i feel like you're advertising to work for general mills <laughs> <laughs> uh you know be fun though uh is if they had like a snickers bar like it's the chocolate outside and inside it's just dry like un stuck together just raw pebbles so it's like <laughs> you bite into it and it just like spills out <laughs> Like a like a surprise, like a piñata. Yeah, I, I I'm down. I'm down. Give that a shot. You know, I, I do miss. I used to, you know, when you're younger, you have cereal all the time, and I really don't have cereal anymore, and I, and I think I miss it. And that's why I was really drawn to this Fruity Pebbles candy bar. Um, oh, yeah, that that's favorite sugar uh, cereal. So yeah, favorite you're just cereal. Addicted to sugar. My favorite cereal. Yeah. 
gosh uh i mean they don't make ninja turtles cereal anymore so that's out true um or the the batman one from 89 that's just like Do you remember the nintendo corn. one where you could mario was on one side and zelda was on the other i do but I, like i never ate it that much i like i saw yeah, it i, don't I never got it but if i, I remember getting to, the box so if i had to pick one that's like still around today I, it'd probably be raising that brand oh wow what a really old fucking dude thing to say <laughs> The only problem is I don't it, cause it's like one of the most expensive cereals because it has almonds and raisins and true like, everything in it. So it's good. Yeah. And yeah. Supposedly healthy. Yeah. My favorite has always been cap and crunch. Like uh, I'm a big cap and crunch guy. <laughs> no way. That stuff cuts the roof of your mouth. <laughs> That's what a bitch is telling lies. <laughs> I'm telling you. Uh, <laughs> there was a while where Carl's Jr. I mean, this is, I don't know, 12 years ago. They used to have a cap and crunch shake. Where it was just a vanilla milkshake, but they'd blend in Cap and Crunch and sprinkle it on the top, and it was really good. I think that's why I'm fat now. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> fat, you're working out. It's just it's all muscle. That's true. Um, yeah. I also like uh, shredded mini wheats because you. Kinda, oh yeah, those are good. You can kind of handful handful those without like milk and everything pretty easily. Just good. Yeah, I, I, they have a blueberry one that's really good for those. Oh yeah, like uh, yeah, blueberry and strawberry filled. Yeah, that's a good one. Usually a little more expensive, so I don't indulge in that. But yeah, they have a yeah, they have no. like coffee flavored ones too and stuff, which I don't know. That sounds it's, horrible. It's like good for maybe like two bites and you're like, ugh. I you know, it. I'm not a big coffee fan. I think coffee is too bitter. Oh, no. Nah, yeah. I yeah. like, um, I'm a more of a tea guy. You know, I like teas. <laughs> totally. Me too. Yeah. Coffee is, I don't know. I don't know why people pay like $7 for that shit. I know. I mean, people love it. My wife loves it. I, I just, I could, I've never been able to get into it. I think I have this aversion to bitter things. So coffee has always been bitter to me. So I'm not the biggest fan of it. Yeah. I mean, either. Anywho. Funny, uh, <laughs> every time I think about that though, like uh Ted Lasso, like he has an aversion to tea kind of like for the same reaction. Mm-hmm. I just think it's funny that. Yep. We're the opposite of that. Yeah. Well, maybe that's because, you know, he goes to England and he doesn't like the tea there. Yeah. And also you don't like British people. So it's like, you shouldn't like tea. (laughs) You do. (laughs) True. If I had to pick a group of people that I despise (laughs) the most, it's the Brits. (laughs) Yeah. Ever since you kicked their ass in 76. Yeah. I still hold that 260 year grudge. (laughs) (laughs) It's it's weird because you threw all that tea in the harbor. You thought you would have kept it, but you destroyed it. Yeah, it's what we do. We're we're rebel rousers. <laughs> Anyways, that was a weird topic we got on. Um, yeah, cereal's not usually a uh, lead off to movie news. So no, but you know, hey, it's my show. I do what I want when I want. Damn right. Uh, speaking of which, you can see us at Fan Expo this year, which is happening the first weekend of July. Um, come by and say hi. We will be there with our uh, booth. In theory, because they were supposed to charge us for the booth and they haven't yet. So I'm a little worried they lost our paperwork and our $200 deposit. Oh, well, let's email them back. <laughs> I, yeah, if I can find that form. You know, when you get done with a con for three days and you come home, you just dump everything on a pile mm-hmm. <laughs> and then don't look at it for like six months. Oh, yeah. Uh, I hope I can find it. Oh, I'm sure you can. I, I have faith in you. I have to have a full, clean sweep of this place. I mean, disaster. someone has to have faith in you, right? Can't just be me all the time. <laughs> it's not working out so great just being me. <laughs> <laughs> um, this week on Real Nerds, we saw Death on the Nile. Brad, do you recommend Kenneth Branagh's second turn as Perot? Gosh, I'm still getting used to the format where we do this right away. It's so weird. Um, <laughs> uh, it, yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's a uh, you know if you're looking for a murder mystery um, and haven't been exposed to Agatha, Agatha Christie novels like I have, it, it's fine. Um, I, I felt I had more fun with it than Murder on the Orient Express, where I was just kind of put off by like the end. Where I don't know. I was going to say it, but I shouldn't. Uh, the the reveal for that movie was like, oh, that's like too clever, boo. And then this one, I thought it was going to happen again, 
and it didn't. And I was like, oh, okay, that's kind of what I expected. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I expected. And that's, that's fine. Um, but I don't know. It, it, overall, it just, it still wasn't that inter- interesting. Um, and there's like a lot of extra, I felt like there's like a lot of extra stuff padded for time. Um, and yeah, yeah. What'd you think? I agree with everything you said. I, it's a good movie to look at. I think the performances are fine, but it seems like it takes a long time to get going. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know. It's, I mean, they're not bad movies, both of them. Like I don't mind watching them, but it leaves me wanting something more. Here's the trailer for Death on the Nile. On the Nile. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the newlyweds, Mr. and Mrs. Simon Doyle. You must meet Hercule Poirot. My congratulations, madame. Merci. And he's only the greatest detective alive. I suspect you invited me for reasons other than the fun. You had something to hide. We have the Karnak all to ourselves, a chef and enough champagne to fill the Nile. Should have hidden it, shouldn't you? When you have money, no one is ever really your friend. It's too late to change events. It's time to face the consequence. Someone is dead. The crime. His murder. Never again is what the murderer is one of you. Were you aware of any grudges? Madame is used to getting what she wants. Never again is what she I don't feel safe here. I don't feel safe with any of them. There are so many conflicting hates and jealousies. Oh, I like this. Did you see or hear anything? I did not trust her. I still don't. What did you do last night? You accused me of murder. He accuses everyone of murder. It is a problem, I admit. The murder was methodically planned. Find who did this. You are mad. Can I not trust you? What do you want me to say? Someone else is dead. You lie in my face! Lock the doors! The murderer is here. And will stay here. Yeah, I'm glad you said that, because I swear, I thought it was about an hour into the movie, and I was like, there is an actual murder happening, right? Like, I know! It's... <laughs> Because to me, I, I always like uh, murder mysteries. I know that they have to unravel slowly, but you know, where something like Cruella that was two and a half hours long that went by really quick, even though you're kept on waiting for her to move from Ella to Cruella, you know, but it was okay because the rest of the movie was entertaining. In this movie, I just felt like it was plodding along. And it's look at these actors, look at this locale, look at this ship going really slowly down the Nile. The and... most hilarious part of the movie, I thought, was when Gal Gadot is dressed up as Cleopatra. Mm-hmm. And she has this big reveal of her just sitting in this giant cloak, like in front of the, the ship. <laughs> yeah. it, it felt like it was, her, her, it, it was like part of our audition for the Cleopatra movie that I think they're doing. Yeah. Um, so that was like, I don't know, it just felt so silly of like, we're, we're wasting time on this. Yeah, I know. And, and then the, even some of the jokes didn't fit right with me like throughout the movie i go it's i don't know which jokes were there jokes uh just uh you know how he accuses people and oh like some um, of the trailer yeah and then just it just seems out of place and then there's um, a ton of time spent in the beginning like the prologue just explaining why his mustache is the way it is <laughs> yeah and i guess it I informs mean, a little bit to like why he's like broken hearted but like I could get just get that from like an expositional f- phrase of like, yeah, I, I there was someone I love, but she died uh, from a I know, bombing. Like, like I didn't back, need a back prologue. to back, uh, you know, World War One movies where I go, man, 
uh, this is you know whatever i, thought <laughs> I, guess I was, the, in the, I, I, thought I was the in the Kingsman. wrong movie at first like i was sitting there yeah. and they have the whole like 19, 1917 style opening i'm like <laughs> did i get the theater number wrong like which movie is this well, i guess in the kingsman at the beginning it wasn't world war one when his wife died oh that's but, right yeah but i don't know like yeah, it was in Belgium. I was like, well, that's pretty far from the Nile. So I'm not sure this is the right movie. <laughs> yeah. And then like they have the like the one captain guy and he turns around and like, oh, they uh, de-aged Kenneth Branagh a little bit. And then it like turned like the camera pans left and then there's actually Kenneth Branagh de-aged. I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> threw me yeah. off. Um, oh, he's not even the captain. Interesting. Okay. I mean, I guess it <laughs> does. I mean, I guess this is a pretty well-known story. Um, this couple's on their honeymoon on a luxury cruise, and there's a murder. Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And which which what of the I people closest to like them did two, it? Yeah, what I just told you in two seconds is like two hours of setup in this film. And right away, like from the wedding, I was like, okay, there's there's a. It's highly plausible that. I don't remember their names, but the girl in red and Army Hammer are in cahoots to uh, swindle Gal Gadot out of her money. Um, and he's doing that by marrying her. And they're going to. So like right away, I'm just like, that's probably it. And then the rest of the movie basically for me is like watching them deflect the whole time. Yeah. And then coming back around and be like, oh, OK, I, I saw what was going from the beginning. Because uh, like, why else should we would she constantly be showing up to where they are? Yeah. And I, I don't know. I think the last great murder mystery movie I watched was The Wolf of Snow Hollow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> At least interesting. <laughs> I was thinking Knives Out, but okay. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, but I said the last one. That one came out after Knives Out. You said the last great one. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Uh, yeah. Snow Hollow is yeah, fine. Yeah. Like, like I said, this movie, like, it looks nice. Everybody acts well. But Actually, now that you weirdly i was frustrated by the cgi wide shots like the sprawling aerial like sweeps mm. of like it just it totally looked like cgi egypt and then a lot of times the backgrounds behind the actors were removed you know they, yeah. they, like they're cgi'd in so that like that stuck out but so i mean gorgeous. i guess I, I mean the cinematography i thought it looked nice um, yeah the production design's great yeah everything's very expensive looking <laughs> yeah uh but yeah i guess you're right now i'm thinking about it see knives out to me is like a cool murder mystery you know yeah and it's not like and, a sweeping epic it's it's all self-contained in that in that house pretty much yeah and they just let the characters play out where i mean i don't know I, I never really connected with any characters in the movie either i mean i guess i'm supposed to like perot but i don't know I, I still... wish this, yeah i wish the movie did a better job of putting you in perot Poirot's shoes because it's often like you don't know what's going on and then he'll just step in and he'll have all the dots connected and I kind of yeah. wish you were able to like think it through with him you know it's not, it's not like he pins points a bunch of different things and then like you can think with him it's often just like something happened and then he just comes up with an answer um, out of the blue which I don't know I guess maybe it's I haven't read the books maybe that's just how it is I have no idea yeah you know because um Daniel Craig's character Benoit and uh, Knives Out. At least you kind of get the idea that he's a couple steps ahead of everybody. And when he explains stuff, you see, oh yeah, that's when he did that. But I don't know. Yeah, this movie is like hard to review for me too. I don't know really what else to say about it. That I don't know. It just took forever to get going, and I hate movies like that. I don't mind long movies, but I hate a movie that just feels like it's a chore to get somewhere. You know what I mean? And yeah, I felt that, like that on this. That was pretty much the first hour of just like yeah. just introduction after introduction. And it was like, get to the actual, like it doesn't start until Army Hammer gets shot in the, in the shin, which by the way, I was sitting there going like, okay, he's not letting anyone look at the wound. So it's probably paint. And it feels like this argument's been staged and there's only four people in that room. So only one of those four people took the gun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so see maybe you should just write the next Perot movie and then you'll be good to go yeah i need to go visit agatha christie's grave and just <laughs> piss on it <laughs> just be like you screwed it up 
<laughs> dig with your hands and just grab her corpse and shake her. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you so bad at this? <laughs> I don't mean, yep. it looks fine in the screenplay is garbage. I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? Um, I mean, it didn't make me want to read the book, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's also yeah. What, what that book's like, what, a hundred years old or something? Oh, yeah, I think so. So Probably more. Just think of all the other murder mysteries that have been created based on this since then. It's just, yeah, of course it feels derivative. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I get it. I mean, it's not, I, I don't hate the movie. I just, it's whatever. <laughs> Yeah, it it's fine. uh it's like when I went and saw Moonfall and I go, man, I'm really glad I I have a subscription where you know I can pay a dollar, whatever it is, to watch this. I mean, I know I pay twenty bucks, but I've seen enough movies this month that I've already way paid for it. But well, that's the thing is if you if you go see more than two movies, like that's how you make it worthwhile. Cause yeah, everything after those two is basically free. So I know that's like I said, I, I was going to make it black light, but when I saw that it wasn't playing at the Alamo, I was like, fuck that. <laughs> yeah. Um, just because I, I, I really wanted to stick it to um, our listeners because I mean, not our listeners, but Corinne, because didn't she want us to see marry me? I'm still waiting for a compelling argument to make marry me the film of the week. Other than you boys need to see uh, some bullshit romantic comedy. Well, once we implement our uh, challenge rules, uh, that could come to pass. It could. It could. Um, When I hammer those out, to give people a little background, we're going to do a thing where people can challenge us to see any film throughout the year. They get two of them. And my goal is to make sure I roll this out when there's no more shitty romantic comedy so Corinne can't make us see them. (laughs) Nice. 3D chess. Uh Yes, I do this too to see if the other nerds listen to our episodes because, you know. I mean, it should um, be easier. They're way shorter now. Yeah, totally. And our, yeah, I mean, we even had like a little cool Easter egg at the beginning of our last one, which came across really well. Thanks, Brad, for being electrocuted last week. I appreciate it. Yeah, you know, I I make sacrifices for this show for sure. (laughs) Sweet. Uh, This week um, was the Super Bowl, so there's a lot of uh, trailers that came out. And that's usually what I would pick for my news story. But instead, I got some bad news for this week in the news. It's real news. We lost a really big name this week, Brad. We did. I think it was yesterday. Ivan Reitman, prolific director, writer passed away they said peacefully in his sleep uh saturday night at the age of 75 she's pretty young for that generation yeah it seems really young it's a bummer um i you know he besides ghostbusters and animal house and things like that uh do you have a favorite ivan reitman film fred yeah probably just the first ghostbusters um yeah he kind of slowed down later on in his career. He didn't uh, no, quite wh- do as much. He kind of transitioned into being a producer. Yeah. Well, well, what's your favorite? Uh, yeah. You know, it's, it's a tough one. I, I would probably say Ghostbusters as well. Um, but, you know, I mean, I also have like a soft spot for uh, Kindergarten Cop, um, Stripes. And also, uh, he directed Legal Eagles with uh, Robert Redford, which, of course, features the Rod Stewart hit uh, Love Touch. So, <laughs> mm, Tough choice. <laughs> yeah. No, no, really. I think Ghostbusters is probably his best movie. And um, But I do love Kindergarten Cop. I used to watch it all the time with my dad. And um, it's one of those films that we would always turn on, you know. Yeah, it was a fun one. But yeah, he kind of transitioned to being a producer. I mean, if I just go through his IMDb page, he's produced 93 films. Wow. Um, no shit. With the, He had two last year, which was Ghostbusters and Space Jam. Um, but there's always like things that pop up that always surprise me, like just scrolling through his stuff. The Uninvited, which is a horror film. Um, you know, he's 
is pretty cool about getting uh, young people their start as well and helping them have uh, their chance. So, yeah, and his kids have been uh, oh yeah, well the art house circuit. So. Great, and you know, I remember seeing Ghostbusters Afterlife, and I shed a tear, and I said, "Man, I'm crying in a Ghostbusters movie." <laughs> And there's that part where um, Harold Ramis's ghost puts his hand on his granddaughter to help her fight the ghosts. <laughs> they go, oh. And, yeah. That's just me being a, <laughs> a goober. Um, so but, yeah. sentimental. Oh, man. I'm just like scrolling through this. I didn't know he was an executive producer on Rabid, Shivers. So um, a lot of Cronenberg's early works and I guess that makes sense. They're both from Canada. So, did he ever direct a like a horror movie? Uh, not that I. Oh, I mean, I guess could you call Ghostbusters a horror film? I guess kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's still mostly a comedy with like horror elements. You know, it's like saying Shaun of the yeah. Dead's a horror film. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. I think Shaun of the Dead is more horror than that because Shaun of the Dead kind of really goes for the jugular at the end. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's a bummer. I wasn't expecting that news. Yeah, like again, it feels like feels pretty uh young for people in his generation. Yeah. You know. Um yeah, it's too bad. It's a bummer. And Brad, I heard you have some Jean-Claude Van Damme news for me. Yeah, the kind of a surprise is that uh Van Damme is thinking about retiring and he wants to go out by uh, making a movie uh, about him fighting all of his cinematic villains. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't, I can't imagine the, uh, the legal issues that they will have to navigate to get all those characters in the same movie. Um, it's not like a space jam level property. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so, you'd have to get the estate of Raul Julia to sign off by using his likeness. Yeah. Plus, in, in the street Capcom fighter. Saying, Capcom, yeah. You can use them bison. Um, Hey man, I'm down. My favorite, my favorite villain, hands down, is the Sandman from Death Warrant. Who's your, who's your favorite Van Damme villain? Oof. Uh, I mean, he's pretty good as a villain in Expendables too. Correct. So that'd be great oh, to, for him to fight himself, dude. If he fights himself from as a bad guy from Expendables too, I'm totally down with that movie. I mean, he has to fight himself because like, he has like three movies where he's like twins. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, in Double Impact, that scene where they're fi- he's fighting himself is pretty dope. Yeah, I mean, it just makes sense that he has to, if, if it's the movie he's going to go out on, he has to have uh, like a duplicate of himself somewhere in the movie, so why not just have him fight himself? Yeah, I, I, I think that's a brilliant idea. <laughs> yeah. Hey, whoever's producing this, call me. I'll make it happen. <laughs> yep. I've studied a lot yeah, of Van Damme over the past decade. <laughs> <laughs> you sure have. <laughs> Uh, he should fight Mayor Knob, obviously. Yep. That'd be amazing. <laughs> um, you, yeah. uh, did you see the trailer for uh, Nicolas Cage's, like, The Unbearable Weightness of Genius or something? I forget the name. Yeah, yeah I, I really want to see that movie. It's uh, I'd heard about it, but I hadn't watched the trailer. But that trailer is kind of like the vibe I get from Van Damme's premise, where it's like, yeah. you know, celebrating himself. And yeah. Yeah, Seems it like makes sense fun. for someone like Nick Cage to do that film. I, I, I don't know. I mean, if I, Van Damme, he can't make it serious, right? It's going to be pretty on the nose, correct? <laughs> uh, it, it's got to be a comedy. Like, I, I, I'm trying to imagine that movie is serious. Like, how, how does that, like, all the characters, like, most of the movies he's been in have been serious movies. So those are all serious villains. Yeah. Um, and for them to be together, I, yeah, I don't know. I, it, it just seems like it has to be a comedy for me. I know, because you, you can only take it serious for a little bit. You know, I think the premise you can set up serious, but towards the end, I mean, yeah, like I don't maybe, know. maybe the stakes are like world ending, but yeah, you know, like they all have to be like, um, what's his name from Last Action Hero? Yeah, Slater. Not Slater, but uh, like the villain. You know, it's oh, like, uh, fuck. Can't believe I just drew a blank. Yeah, Charles Dance's character. What's his freaking name? It's um, Scorpio or something? <laughs> no, it's 
God damn it. I, I can, this is my, like one of my favorite movies. I cannot believe I can't, I'm drawing a blank right now. I know, but I, I, I guess my point is it's kind of like last action hero where, you know, he does have like a serious plan to like bring all the movie villains into the real world, but it's still kind of silly. It's fucking Benedict. Oh, it. Benedict. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so there's kind of like real stakes, but it's still silly and homages the, you know, the star's filmography. Yeah. So, cool. I'll watch it for sure. Yeah, I hope it happens. I'd love to see him fight like uh, like the film from Bloodsport and yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. M. Bison and himself. Oh, I, I, just, I want to see that movie happen now. It's great. <laughs> um, here is the big Hollywood comeback. Uh, so Death on the Nile is our number one film of the week with 12.8 million. Um, it's not bad. It's not bad. And it's also Super Bowl Sunday. Um, I, I was reading Variety and they're thinking that because today is Valentine's Day, that the Monday will be bigger than most Mondays in February. Um, Jackass Forever made 8.1. It's It cost, uh, as reading, cost $10 million to make. And it's already at uh, 37 domestic and 10 million international. So it's at almost 50 million. So you make five times your, uh, your budget, you're good to go. Yeah. I'm actually kind of surprised. I thought, uh, I think like Jackass 3d. Yeah. I was, I'm looking it up right now. It, it made it to 117. Wow. Um, so I'm a little disappointed in it's very steep drop off already, but <laughs> I love that the poster that they have on box office mojo is pressed in getting punched in the ball sack. <laughs> yeah. Obviously there's a boxing glove covering his nuts, but it's pretty funny. <laughs> um, and of course the, the big news for me is uh, Spider-Man is less than a million away from being number three all time on, in box office domestically. So it's going to get that there. Is pre- that is pretty incredible. If you ask me. Um, I would say it's a rare the, thing, but it seems like the past five or six years, Marvel movies have been doing that consistently. So it's only a matter of yeah. time before it gets beat again. I guess, um, you know, it's interesting if you look at Marvel's track record, they have the solo movies that they introduce the characters do about 170 to 180. And then it's usually around their third movie where they just blow up. Um, you know, Captain America was that way. Winter Soldier is great. I think it made like 300, but then Civil War was up to 400 million. So, yeah. Um, but people say Civil War is basically like another Avengers movie anyway. So, you know, true. when you cram all that extra cool stuff in there. Yeah. And I was uh, reading that um, the Batman was tracking for, they're saying 90 million, but all the IMAX showings that we're going to on March 1st have sold out. So they revised it to like 140. And my guess is it's probably going to shatter that. I mean, that'd be great. It'd be nice to the, see DC get some success for once. Yeah. They said the only uh, thing that's going to hinder it is it's three hour runtime, but yeah. And uh, end game was three hours and it didn't hurt that at all. So yeah. um, if you make a movie that people want to see, they'll go see it no matter how long. End game was also the payoff of like 10 years of work too. So yeah, but I think too. I think they they're selling the Batman really well, so I, I think I think I think it's going to have. I, I'm guessing it's going to do like 180. Yeah, I mean that's the thing is like people haven't bought into this Batman yet, so it, they still have to sell it. And I think you know we'll we'll know that on the second weekend. Or... Well, I I think too. That's why I think they have a lot of faith in the film, and I think that's why they're doing this fan thing uh, five days before the movie comes out. So we see it and we're going to tell everybody else to see it. Um, you know, it kind of creates a grouse grassroots marketing campaign. Um, because I mean, I'm going to see it again on Friday. I don't know about you. I'll probably go Thursday. 
So true. Yeah, I'll probably see it again, and then I, I want to see it in 4DX. So oh yeah, definitely I'd like Sweet. to see what kind of special effects design they put for that movie because I've been kind of disappointed with the last few uh, yeah. movies I've seen in 4DX, but. I don't know if that's just like them cutting back to save money because of the pandemic or what. Yeah, hopefully it's this year. It feels like it's starting to get a little more back to normal because the Super Bowl had so many trailers. So um, hopefully we're getting back to a little bit of normalcy. I was looking through the uh, box office stats too for Bad Grandpa, which is like, I guess, a jackass movie that, you know, has a story to it. And that also made like 100 million. So yeah kind of disappointed that forever is probably not going to get past 60. Yeah, that's all right. Like I said, if they only, it only costs $10 million to make, they're happy. True. Um, I yeah. am not sure if the other nerds are going to send anything in, but in case they do, let's hear what they have to say. It's Corinne here for another installment of Showtime, where I tell you about something cool I've been watching and recommend it to all of you. This week, I have to start off by saying that I did finish the rest of Reacher, and I cannot recommend it. The mystery is okay. Like, it's enough to get you invested, like, the first, I don't know, three episodes, but then after that, I think it just, I don't know if it just goes on too long, or if it just starts to become formulaic, or something... Uh, the dialogue definitely doesn't help. It's like super predictable and trite. And sometimes I'm like, why did you write that? That didn't go anywhere. It was just like super random. You just threw that line in for literally no reason. And same thing with some like action scenes. Like this couple gets killed off super violently, admittedly off camera, but you, you know, you see and you hear enough about it after the fact. And it's like, why? What purpose did that serve? And you, anyway. If you're into that kind of thing, fine, but it's just not for me, so sorry, I can't recommend it. Sorry, I just can't. But I will tell you all about something that I can recommend, and that is the new Jennifer Lopez, Owen Wilson rom-com, Marry Me. I went to see it in the theater tonight, and I gotta say, it is a good rom-com. So if you're into rom-coms, it's right up your alley. And even if you're not, I think you should give it a chance. The two leads have some pretty good chemistry. There's some very funny, witty dialogue. You know, it just, you know, feels like a (laughs) admittedly kind of weird premise. But once you get over that hurdle, you're kind of like, yeah, I'm on board. Cool, let's see where this goes. And of course, you kind of know where it goes because rom-coms are pretty formulaic. So it's like, you know, all the beats that are going to happen before they happen. But by then you're invested enough that you're like, I'm going to see this through to the end. And it's pretty good. The premise of like the two singers, um, you know, having this song that they sing together and they're going to get married. And then she finds out she's cheating or he's cheating on her. So she marries this random guy in the crowd, Owen Wilson's character. Um, So the fact that it's two singers, um, you know, there's a lot of music that plays into the plot and... The songs are pretty good. (laughs) Go check out the soundtrack, I guess, if you want. And it's it's just like a really optimistic movie. I came out of the theater smiling and just kind of like, yeah, you know, maybe sometimes things will work out in the end. And (laughs) just like, what what is how does Ted Lasso say it? Uh, I believe in communism, rom communism. That is, (laughs) everything will work out in the end. So, anyway. Please give it a chance. I'm sad that I, my friend and I were the only ones in the theater. I mean, it was nice that we kind of had our private screening to ourselves. Um, but eh, I'm like, I, I hoped that there would be more people in the theater just because, you know, I want this movie to do well. I want Hollywood to make more rom-coms and better rom-coms. And if the box office doesn't reward the good ones that we already have then that will disincentivize Hollywood from making more in the future. Or at least they'll make them, but they'll just be bottom of the barrel, really predictable, really cringy stuff. And again, this was predictable, but I mean, it was, it had, you know, it was earnest and it was cute and I just, it, it, it had good energy to it. And I liked the idea of, 
you know, her being in the spotlight and him now being in her spotlight and all this attention on him with, in social media and everything. And they kind of, you know, give you this idea of like, they are always being watched. And just that idea of, you know, when the cameras are off, are they any different as people? Um, and he, anyway, I could talk about it a oh, while. Wow. <laughs> it is, it is streaming on Peacock Peacock Premium, ooh, if you have that. Um, I didn't want to bother to sign up for Peacock since I have Regal Unlimited. I'm just like, I can go see it for free in the theater by myself. <laughs> no need to stay at home. So please give it a chance. Sign up for Peacock Premium if you don't have it already, or just go to the theater. And while you're at the theater, you should definitely check out Death on the Nile which I also saw, sorry I didn't get to talk about it on the main part of the episode, but uh, I saw it twice actually. Really good movie. I liked this um, journey that Kenneth Branagh's Poirot has gone on in the last two movies. I kind of hope they make another one, just because the way it ended, I was like, where is this going? (laughs) I kind of hope this isn't the end for our Poirot and that he gets another, a final chapter probably. Um, so yeah, please see Marry Me, please see Death on the Nile. Both are really good movies. Different movies, but both are good at what, they're, they're good at their respective genres. I'll say that. So thanks for listening to me, nerds, and I'll talk to you all again soon with something to be determined. Bye! Hey film buddies, follow me around Denver. This week, The Esquire is screening The Room and the Rocky Horror Picture Show. That's for the weekend of February 25th and 26th. So go ahead and check that out. And that's what's going on around town. Thank you, fellow nerds. Brad, thank you for being on this journey with me today uh, down the river Nile. I'm surprised Uh, we didn't talk about the uh, Doctor Strange trailer. Yeah, the well, you know, I was trying to keep the the podcast going. But I mean, we could talk about it if you want. <laughs> I, was, I was just surprised. Like, did I hear Patrick Stewart's voice in that trailer? Yeah, that's the big thing. Is they're saying that's Patrick Stewart, and uh, in comic book world, he and um, Tony Stark and Doc Strange and Namor and Reed Richards are part of a secret group, uh, meta humans. If they get out of line. So they're kind of like a behind the scenes um, cabal. And uh, yeah, there people are saying that that's, you know, Professor X. And there's also rumors that Tom Cruise is showing up as uh, superior Iron Man because he was originally going to be Iron Man. Um, I don't know which ones will pan out, but uh, it's definitely a horror movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's pretty, uh, it seems like it's, kind of dark and it's really cool to see sam raimi in there even in the trailer i can see some sam raiminess to it so yeah it should um, be fun to see like unhinged sam raimi with a i guess an un- un- unlimited budget oh yeah it's gonna be great um because he hasn't made a movie since oz the great and powerful and you know that's almost 10 years ago yeah he's just been producing so yeah but i mean when you get paid 50 million dollars not to make spider-man 4 you know you can kind of do whatever <laughs> you want <laughs> I guess he did direct like the pilot for Ash vs. Evil Dead, right? He did. Yeah, he's done a couple things like that, but he's as far as a film, no. Yeah. He, well, well, he has that that Ghost House uh, productions where he takes a lot of uh, up and coming filmmakers and gives them a chance to make a horror movie, which is cool too. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, it's only what two <laughs> months away. Yeah. I, well, yeah, like two and a half. Dude, yeah. freaking the Batman is two and a half weeks away <laughs> i know it's like uh a... well, it's so cool because you know these movies <laughs> that have supposed to come out such a long time ago are now finally starting to come and it just makes me really excited it's also weird too like i'm at a point in my life where you know i've seen like three iterations of batman on screen yeah four i guess um so yeah it's just like I don't know. I, I, I just don't have expectations for it anymore. You know, I feel like I've gotten everything I deserve to get. And now it's just like, you know, it's, it's all like extra. So, Oh, 
yeah, I feel the same way about Spider Man. Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, I know the last movie was like, uh, so up until then, uh, Amazing Spider Man 2 was your favorite Spider Man movie, right? <laughs> And now it's got to be far from home, right? Favorite Hello? Spider-Man movie is the original Spider-Man 2. Okay. Home is my favorite Spider-Man movie now. Yeah. I mean, no way brainer. home. I mean, no way home. Uh, but yeah, no, I I freaking love it. And um, it's, it's kind of nice because not only is that, but, you know, Into the Spider-Verse and all the other stuff that's happening. And it's good to be a Spider-Man fan. Yeah. But yeah, I'm excited for that, man. But yeah, there's, there's like, they don't have to deliver anything for me. Like, I think I'll just enjoy it, you know? Oh, yeah. No, that's all you want. I just want them, I want it to be a cool movie, you know? That's yeah. it. That's all I want for my Spider-Man. Just a cool movie. Because, I mean, they're going to have villains, and I just want Peter Parker to be cool, and I want Spider-Man to be cool. That's all I want in my life. It's a good way to live. Cool. Yeah. Speaking of Spider-Man, uh, next week is Uncharted with our buddy Tom Holland. Which should be fun. <laughs> yeah, I never played the game, so I will have oh, a you're missing perspective out. on it. Yeah, I'll be, able to re- be interested to hear. I'll be able to review it as just a movie. Yeah, I'll be interested to hear. Yeah. So, Brad, thanks as always. And I'll see you at the movies next week. Thanks for listening to Real Nerds Podcast, a Nebulous Visions production. Stream or download episodes, read articles at realnerdspodcast.com. Stream us on Apple or Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or iHeartRadio. Follow us on Facebook, Real Nerds Podcast. Twitter and Instagram, at Real Nerds. Watch us on YouTube, Real Nerds Podcast. Email us at realnerds at gmail.com. Call us at 720-6Nerds5. Thank you to Sparks Mandrill, Mike at Plan 9 Studios, and Bolognium for all of our groovy theme songs. And that's how you fucking do it.